All right, guys. As you can see, I am under the dump truck. Uh, I wanted to paint under here. I gotta do some sandblasting and or wire wheeling and doing some paint. Anyways, while I was under here the other day fixing some wires, I wasn't too happy with um, the leveling valve. I was having trouble with the leveling valve. So the leveling valve, uh, just so you know, I already disconnected it. So I'll just put it back in. So the way it works is this is a Peterbilt Air Leaf um, Air Track suspension. Um, normally they come with a stock leveling rod that's not adjustable. But because I put this rear end in and the drive shaft is custom and it doesn't have a uh, twin screw, meaning like tandem axle, so there'd be a power divider, front axle, <clears throat> and then the drive line angle would be preset from that axle on the power divider top of that pumpkin to this one. It changes the angle, so in order to change the drive line angle to get rid of the vibration, the stock leveling um the stock leveling rod would not work so i bought an adjustable one and i had to play with it till i got the vibration to go away and that was fine we got rid of the vibration on that um however i'm losing air and it's because this doohickey so the way it works is the air comes in through the supply line to the valve um to the valve it comes in here so that line there i wish this gopro would stay on um, that line there comes into this valve here, um, and then I put this pressure gauge in to make sure I was getting it. I am getting 120 at the, um, valve. So then it goes through there, and then this rod is connected to this rod, and obviously, so if it was connected right now, it would be in this position. Because the bags are deflated, you can see the bag deflated. And the truck is down so this will pump air into pump air into the bags until the rod comes out level and then you know there's a valve in here that works and then it'll stop and then if it goes over you know if the rods down it will dump air out of this exhaust valve back here um, that's the exhaust part of the valve and I took out, I'll see if I can get it. But you have this little line that went from the bag to the valve. And then this other line goes on the port. It's, uh, you know, C1 and C2. And then this one here is your dump valve. I don't have that hooked up to the switch. That's so if you want to dump your bags, you just hit the switch on the dashboard and it sends air to this, pushes a plunger, I assume it's a plunger, over to the exhaust valve and dumps the air. <clears throat> now, I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to put a bigger line in here. I, I, I can't remember the sizes of these, so I'm not going to, like, you know, quarter and three-eighths or whatever they are. But it doesn't matter. You can see the thicknesses. I'm going to up the size. I went and got a new valve, and I got new... Um, line and I'm gonna up the size going to the bags so we can get more volume in here at a time now these are air equipped like the you know you just push them in and then um, you push that little collar in and then pull that out and when you put it in to set it you push it in and then pull on the line kind of like Chinese finger traps anyways let me crawl out from under this truck um, I didn't want to come through the top because, um, you know, obvious reasons. I don't want that thing falling on me. And this hoist folds that way. So if the body fall, falls down, this whole hoist, this whole assembly here folds over that way. So we're good. This whole area is completely open above me. As long as I don't stick my head past here, we're good. So I already took this off. My son is actually trying to get a rock that's stuck in the undercarriage of the skid steer from the last fill job we did. That's what that banging is. But I already disassembled this. Um, shot it with some PB blaster. Let me crawl out and then I'll show you the new valve. Let me just show you real quick these positions on this valve. So 
you see the little holes right there that's if you wanted to if the valve gets bolted in sideways I'm trying to hold this camera at the same time so that would be another position in other words if you moved the rod like this that would be to fill it and then that would be to dump the air and then if it bolted in like this you would have to switch this leveling rod to the next hold position and then it, it works like this much range of motion so it would be like kind of like get the point so they give you I'll show you one two three four so there's four positions that you can put this in depending on which way it bolts up to the truck this actually is a Hendrickson valve but an air valve is an air valve um, this is a Peterbilt suspension but this is a Hendrickson valve Hendrickson makes great suspension parts so let me take this off and then get ready to plumb the new one and I'll show you see that's the exhaust port it just blows the air out of there a lot of times they have a little pigtail on them um, like a little section of hose it's not really necessary you know air is gonna come out but we're probably gonna put that back in the new one um, and then you can see here where it says C2 and then C1 it's got paint on it but it says C1 and then you can see on here you can read where it says um, dump so you put air to here and it, it pushes the plunger in here to bypass I think what's happening is this is bypassing because even when it's level you know even when it's in the level position this should stop working I'm getting air exhausting out of here just a little so I think this valve is no good so let me plumb up the new one because it's you know let me crawl up off the truck here so here's the new one right same thing except we're going with bigger line you can see the difference that way we get more air uh, volume to the bags quicker so I'm gonna do is I'm gonna tighten these in and a lot of these already come with the dope on them you know like the pipe dope um, tape thread liquid thread whatever you want to call it I'm gonna plumb that all up and get that ready then I got a roll of this the dog I got a roll of this wire not wire hose and I just cut it with the um, I just cut it with like one of these plumbing you know shark bite you know the polyplastic plumbing because it's kind of the same but this is DOT approved I got this from a truck place I had rolls of it downstairs when I rebuilt this whole truck um, that's why you save stuff like that because you never know when you own a truck save the truck parts unless they're completely junk um, like the valve I won't save that you know because that thing was like 46 bucks I mean come on you're not gonna put that in there but if you're working on something and you have extra you know brand new line you know save that all right let me um swap over all the fittings and when we're ready to put this in the truck i'll bring you back under the truck with me all right guys um let me show you this one-way check valve i'm gonna put in uh the supply line going to the air tank uh from what are you doing can you stop seriously oh man so oh yeah check valve so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna put in this one-way check valve um, from the air the supply from the air tank to the valve and I'll just show you real quick to just simple just to show you how it works right you turn it around can't blow in it the other way okay so there's the arrow showing you the direction um, of the airflow I'm going to plumb this in and um, that way there won't be no bleed back th to the tank um, so 
uh, the air suspension while I'm loading the truck uh, with the excavator or something for a while the bags will uh, stay inflated uh, a little longer because every truck I don't care what anyone says or what the DOT says every truck when it sits will bleed back air to the tank or it'll just they just they just do all right I'm back from the auto parts store do you guys remember where all this goes no you don't remember oh all right let me see if I remember uh the thingy goes with that thingy goes with that thingy and that thingy goes on that thingy and then this thingy make that thingy work and then that thing makes some noise and then truck go boom maybe we'll see okay this is how we look uh feed comes in there pressure gauge face in the back of the truck this thing bolts on like that so now you got your two airbag one and two supplies then you got your um, air dumping with a little pigtail cut it because uh it's curved down so it'll blow towards the ground put in the dump valve um fitting for the dump valve line and i'll put put that on later after and then you know obviously your rod and then it bolts in like this so all pipe doped all sealed i gotta tighten up the end one i left this piece and this check valve loose um until i get under the truck but if you look under the dump body like the spillway uh like where the spill sh wow what do you call it where the spill plate is <clears throat> you are able to look through the crack kind of like back where your um trail hitches and see that dump gauge so that's how she goes i'm gonna put her under the truck and then we'll check back i just need both hands to do it so <sighs> sometime right all right so i got the valve in I've um, got the gauge facing backwards, got the rod hooked up. I don't have the dump one ho hooked up yet. Have the check valve, one-way check valve plumbed in. Um, have the supply line on. Have the bottom line looped around the pinnel hitch plate. Sitting on top neatly. Going over to the other bag. Got the bag gauge plumbed in facing backwards so we can see how much air pressure we're getting in the bags. I just gotta tighten this one. And I don't have any room in here, so it's kinda hard to kinda hard to film. What this no room. I don't know what they use for pipe dope on these fittings, but look at it. We're not even, you know. See, like the pipe dope it's like that dried pre 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 pipe dope stuff so <clears throat> it's really stiff and i got the correct correct size wrench which is making it difficult also because it's so perfect <clears throat> i think that's gonna be it we'll give it a, a little if you make noise you gotta make noise and then this is a swivel i think that's gonna be it because i'm gonna end up breaking it it is just brass so i gotta cut a small line to go from here to there but i think i might make a big loop in it seeing as though we have a lot of line going that way um and i am chewing gum and talking at the same time it's a miracle okay so <laughs> I get the line. Then just press it in. Chinese finger trap. Pull it. Make sure. Give it a pull. Make sure it don't come out. Push it back. Pull it again. And then. Ow. Because we have so much line going to the other side. Oh, that hurts. Rock. Oh, I'm working on the dirt, guys. 
because I have so much line going the other side, I'm gonna do a little loop back to here, maybe. I don't know, something like that. I don't think it's necessary, but I'm just gonna do it. You know, so. Maybe we'll go in the corner and then come back. That way, we, if we ever need to cut anything also, for whatever reason. So I'm, I'm just gonna give us a little bit of line loopage just because I want to keep it even so it's even with the other side flow. So, where's my cutters? Alright. I'll give her... Give her the old snipperoo. go up over these wires actually probably should just go under them because later on I gotta do I got some wiring I gotta do too so and then into here like so give her a tug and then uh, I probably could have did a short little one but like I said you want the even I want even between both bags, so same distance travel of line. Not that I, I really don't think it matters, but. All right, so I found the dump valve. It's right here. See, this all started because I just wanted to wire wheel this down and reprimer it, and you know, next thing I know, it turned into a project. But that's how it goes. Anyways. I cut a little bit of this off, got some fresh new meat, fresh meat, and uh, put this little Chinese finger trap coupler on there because, well, we're not going to replumb the whole switch all the way down the whole frame of the truck into the cab. That's just not going to happen, um, just to go an extra foot or two. Okay. We're gonna take this, like so. Uh, probably come out a little bit. And then snip that off. Now we get a nice fresh cut. We might have to cut it a little more. But now, come over here. Feed this under the hoist to the back of the line. I got a guy lined up to come sandblast this. Uh, body and um, hoist but I'm trying to clean it up for a little bit myself for now it's a mobile sandblasting guy so I can keep an eye on his work basically I'm going to be that guy that stands over their guy after the paint job uh, incident I'm not very trusting so might as well tell you um, here's the paint job. Looks good, right? Well, this is the second time the guy had to paint it. And the bill was ridiculous. And there's a lot of stuff I'm not happy about. Okay, so now I gotta go under there. And, um, hook that dump valve up. And I will show you... As soon as I can crawl back under here. See, I put these mud flaps down, but stone the stones are working their way. Ah. Oh the pain. Oh ah. getting too old for this. Oh let's see what we got in the bags. 40 pounds in the bags. I don't know if you can see that. Probably because the body's in the air, so it's putting more weight on the back. And I do hear a little bit of leak. So, might have to tighten that piece up. Or put more 
thread. I might have to put more thread tape on there. Good job. And I didn't let the truck build up all of its air. So we got 100 pounds in the suspension. But let me get a wrench, disconnect this rod, and I'll show you how this air suspension works. Let's see here. However, the problem I think is fixed because the last time out of the drain line, uh, it wouldn't stop leaking, the valve itself. So I fixed that problem. The valve doesn't leak anymore. But now I got another problem over here. Hold on, let me get this off. Okay, so I took the rod off to show you manually how this works. So when the rod is connected, and like I said, this is an adjustable rod, some aren't. Um, when the rod is connected, if it pushes up, it'll put more air in the truck. So you see the bags extended pretty well. And still 40 pounds. So, that's that. However, it'll change your drive line angle. Although, that drive line angle ain't that bad, to be honest with you. Who knows? You might have to try that. And then, when uh, you take load off, See the little pigtail? And then you put a load on and then the rod senses that there's weight, the truck gets weighed down. This, you know, goes up like this. Then it pumps it back up again. And now, I shall show you, probably gonna put that in there. Turn that there, put that in there, like so, I like that, okay? Now, when you put air from, when you hit the switch in the, tr the truck, the dump switch on the dash, it puts air in here, pushes the plunger from here over to the dump valve, okay? And dumps all the air out. All the way down till the bags are completely empty. Um, I'm not gonna go all the way down with it, you know, just just to show you, but you get the point. So then, you know, when you hit the switch, it puts it back to the setting, and then back up again and then uh, you hit a bump this thing this thing's doing this So, the reason why the ride height is very important, usually you want this torque bar straight across with the Peterbilt's air leaf suspension, straight across. Otherwise, your drive shaft angle, this axle, 
will roll up and down and change the angle of your drive line and you'll get a god awful vibration so because this frankenstein of a truck here that i put together myself um is not the same as the um twin axle that this rear end came with um which the housing i actually have to weld this right here these housings crack all the time it's a common thing um, it's not from being overloaded, otherwise you would have axle seals, and as you can see, I got no axle seals leaking. Um, usually when you're super overloaded, you have axle seals leaking. So I was getting a lot of vibration because, um, the stock Peterbilt rod was meant for that twin axle tandem suspension, or I call it twin screw. So I ordered an adjustable rod, and it took me a while of driving around playing with the height to get the the um drive line vibration out so like this right here is is pretty much yeah you know, so that's where it should be sitting so i'm gonna put that rod back in um I'm not going to show you the dump valve on the dash. You get the point. But um, I got a lot of work to do with this truck. And this is just one thing that a lot of people have a lot of. I found that a lot of guys that I know are um, really confused how air ride works. And um, they're really scared to touch it. It's super simple. To be honest with you. Um, and then you have different. So this is like a Peterbilt Air Track Air Leaf sus suspension. Um, you could have a new way suspension, which some new way suspensions, like on buses and stuff, have independent levelers per each side. But the suspension is hinged, has hinged points, so each side can do this. Right? This can only do this if that makes any sense so like if this is a leaf spring see how this has air leaf see the air leaf comes back here and on the other side the air leaf comes back there both of those have to move together because they're both bolted to the axle tube together with the beaver beaver tail i call it the beaver tail housing now if you have a new way suspension like back where, where the bag bolts, there's a tube goes across and there's a big round bolt. I drove a Western Star that had that. And it would literally do this, independent of each other. And it was nice because it had two leveling valves. So if you lean this way, it would pump it up. If you lean that way, it would pump it up. And it was good. This one here, when she leans, she stays that way. Okay, so I re-piped out that thing, and we are in the dump position, and I'm going to yell to my son, and he is going to hit the dump switch, and this is going to go up on its own, although the truck has been off for a little bit, so we only have 60 pounds, so it might, might not go all the way up, so um, go ahead, hit it. Um, yeah, so we're down to 40 pounds of supply. So, but the point is, is everything is working as it should. Okay, hit that dump switch. Pull it back? Yeah, I want to show them how it dumps. Hit it. All right. All 
All right, guys, that's going to be it for this video. Um, I just wanted to show you, I mean, I got some wiring to do. To get the trailer home, I plumbed in a couple lines, and I got to clean this mess up, make a permanent plug and all that. I'm not going to video it because it's kind of tedious work. Then I got to redo this panel hitch plate because this plate's only good for light the small trailer. Um, so there's a ton of stuff to do. Um, like I said, I got a sandblasting guy that gave me a price on mobile sandblasting to do the body and everything. Um, but I'm probably just gonna run the truck for a bit, um, try to make some money with it this season. And then, you know, maybe in the summer we'll have them blast it or something, but that's gonna be it for this video. I hope that explains how uh, <clears throat> air, air leveling valves work. And um, don't be afraid to um, tackle something like that. I got all the fittings at Advanced Auto Parts and the hardware store. So, I mean, it's, it's not a complicated thing. I know a lot of guys are intimidated by it and um, they don't want to work on it. If you are truly terrified of it, by all means, take it to a professional mechanic. Um, don't mess around with it if it really scares you. But if you are mechanically savvy and you, uh, you know, just were afraid of, uh, you know, a bunch of spider webs of lines and stuff and airlines, um, all you have to do is just very calmly pick a day where you have the whole day and start looking at everything and start tracing out what goes where, what does what. Maybe take a picture with your phone if um, you don't have a good memory. Um, this is the fourth Peterbilt that I've owned. So I'm I'm pretty used to messing with these things. And um they're they're all pretty like I said, that's a Hendrickson valve, so they're all pretty, you know, well um they're kind of all similar nowadays. So um trucks in general are kind of similar nowadays. I mean they might have different emblems on the hoods and stuff, but I mean you can get CAD engines, um Cummings engines, pack car engine, Detroit engine, you know different rear ends, different rear end manufacturers, Dayton, uh, not Dayton, uh, what's it, um, Eaton, Eaton, Rockwell's, you know, it all depends, but, um, yeah, that's a lot of rambling, Steve, just end it. Okay, so I'll catch you on the next one.